But here at Clubber TV, we are at Geek Retreat with Paul. I'm Hubert, and Paul is going to be telling us about a game that he has designed and should be published soon. Yes. It's called, uh, what is it called? Reforestation. Okay, well, would you like to tell us a little bit so, about this game? Reforestation is a game for one to four players. It is a game where you are design building your own florists. Ooh. Living out your wildest fantasies. Most people are secretly want to be florists, but they, they keep it keep it hidden from everyone. But I definitely want to be a florist. <laughs> so what you're going to be doing is collecting flowers using mechanics similar but not the same as a Ticket to Ride. And there's an element of splendour in the game as well because as, uh, you're completing orders along the way. Um, the flowers will all have type and they will all have colour. And you're going to be trying to match different orders, some for, for colour, some for type. But also, you can plant flowers, which when, when you go to complete an order, that exhausts the, the flower rather than discarding it, meaning it can be used in multiple orders the next day and things. So, it's a game that lasts about 45 minutes to an hour. It's suitable for families and very family-friendly and gateway-oriented until you add in the staff members. So there's two variants of the game. You can either play the full, the full advanced rules with staff members, which make it a bit more gamer-friendly and in lots of efficiencies and clever strategies going on. Or you can play the, the sort of family game where I've, I've had eight and nine-year-olds nine playing and they've really that's enjoyed good. it as well. Oh, that's good. Okay, well, on that note, would you show us um, how to play the game? Hi, so how are we going to play Reforestation? In Reforestation, you're going to take an action, then the, it will be an, a morning action, that will go around the table clockwise. Then you will flip over the first player token and everyone will take a PM action. You will then pass on the AM action to the first player token to the next person and advance the day by one. So we're going to get two actions a day and there's a different number of days based on the number of players. So what actions can we do? Well, if we look at the actions card here, we can see you can take flowers, take orders, deliver an order, plant flowers or cancel an order. Now, first of all, cancelling an order that's very rarely done, but it is an available action. Basically, that involves these actions in front, uh, front of you. You all start with one, and you can get more during the game. If at the end of the game you've not completed it, you will get minus one point. Therefore, if at any point you need to, you can phone up and say, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to complete your order. Yeah, um, sorry about that. Yeah, I'm, I was really busy with lizards. And so that would be returned to the discard pile, and you would not lose your one point. So... What are the other four main actions? So you can take flowers. For those of people who've played Ticket to Ride, you'll recognize elements of this. You can take two flowers like that. You can take one wildflower. Now, wildflowers represent both color and type. That's a key thing about this game. These All flowers have both type and color. Some orders, like this one, asks for cut types, orchid and chrysanthemum. Some ask for colors, orange and red. So depending on what your orders you're trying to complete, will depend on which flowers you can use. So you can take one wildflower, two from the display, or two blind. You can even take one blind, look at it, and then take one from the display. Taking orders. Now, you are allowed to complete orders from this display. The problem being, so are, your, so are your rivals, and they might complete the order before you're able to. So therefore, we need a method for getting more orders. We can take two orders from the top of the order, order pad. They would go into our, into our, form our order pad, and they can be completed in any order. I can take one order and one flower, or I could take one from the display. Now, it's obviously weaker to take one from the display, but you know what that order is, so it's sometimes worth doing. Least of all, because sometimes, if no one during a day completes an order from here, or takes an order, the end one will go and the rest will slide down, meaning orders can disappear just as you're about to complete them. The next thing you can do is deliver an order. So normally, to deliver an order, you would take the order from the display, so here's me trying to complete the orange and red. And here's my hand of cards. Now, obviously my hand would normally have a hand limit of eight cards. That kicks in at the end of every day. I've collected a few more than eight, but let's just see how I would complete the order. I've got an orange there. It needs three orange and two red. There's another red, another red. There's another orange coming up. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be an orange here soon. There's one. And we'll use a wildflower as the, as the third orange. So one way of doing the orders is to discard those flowers and place them here. However, another thing we can do, and this is always worth a consideration, is the fourth action is I can plant flowers. So from my hand, I could plant an orange tulip. This means when I go to complete the order, I can discard two orange, two red, 
thusly, and exhaust that card, meaning at the end of the day when we refresh, I've got my van on the order with the money that I'm about to earn, because you can only deliver once per day. At the end of the day, the van and money come to me, the order returns to the deck, and that grows back a new bud, meaning it can be used in multiple orders. I could use it in a, in a tulip or an orange order later on. So that's the four main actions. Now, within that, there are some interesting elements to a couple of the orders. For example, these orders have the repeatable symbol. This means instead of discarding them when you complete them, it will stay in front of you face up and you will be have the chance to complete it one further time. Now, these orders are, far, are always for less money, but it means you can complete things a following turn and it means you can generate money that way. When you complete them a second time, they turn sideways and then when they're sideways, they return because you completed them twice. The final type of order is special orders. These special orders have a red criteria at the bottom. This one says it must include two red, but it needs three tulips, three carnations, and three chrysanthemums. If you're lucky, you will get red tulips, chrysanthemums, or carnations along the way. However, you may not manage this. What you are allowed, however, to do is discard any two other red cards. So this red rose could still be discarded as well as these nine cards to complete this order. It is worth noting, however, in order to do this, you cannot use wildflowers for the special criteria. There is also, at the end of the game, a randomly dealt festival. This festival is Mother's Day, and you earn money for selling white cards to the festival. At the end of day 12, when everyone has finished, you may have some cards in front of you laid out. For example, I might have a wildflower in my hand, I may have a couple of whites in front of me alongside some other cards. So let's say I have something like this. Now, I've finished my turn, these two have been used. I can now try and make pairs. There is a pair of whites here, that would be a coin. A wildflower could also be used, but there's nothing to go with it, so I just get one coin at the end of the game. So it's a, in this way, you're never drawing dead on your last round. And the final thing that makes the game really interesting and, and more advanced for, for gamers is staff. Now I've produced a set of five um, staff members here that all go together quite well. What you can do on days one, five and nine is pay one coin to hire a staff member. These staff members all do different things. For example, Goethe Ketchamal, at the end of this game, gained five coins if you've planted all six flowers of colour. Colours of flower, sorry. So, if I've planted all six different colours in front of me, I'll get, I'll get some end game points. Uh, no penalty for unfulfilled orders. Draw three flowers, so they're all doing different things, and they're broadly speaking balanced. What would normally happen once you've played the game a few times is you will draft these cards to create some sort of interplay and efficiencies, but for, for, at the start, you'll all going to be given a set of cards that work well together to make sure that there's balance. And that's how the game works. You play through each day, two actions a day, you just can't plant more than eight flowers in front of you, and you can't plant more than once a day. Hello, welcome back. Um, I had a chance to play Deforestation. Now, because I only had one play of it, I can't say this is a comprehensive review. This is kind of more of a of a initial thoughts, first thoughts of the game. Uh, well, first of all, I must say I liked it. It has a very ticket to ride feel to it and uh, it just feels that except it hasn't got trains and the routes and the board so it has a far more compact feel on the table it doesn't take up as much space one thing I did like about this game uh, it, it was the, the what the artwork of the of the flower cards and the fact that the flowers aren't just a color or a particular type of flower there is a color and um, and the actual type of flower it is. So you can use it to fill different orders. And it can get very frustrating when you, you're going through your, your, the cards in your hand and you're trying to get like three chrysanthemums and you only have two. Uh, so the, the, the game is... I, I like those particular aspects about the game. It is definitely a gateway game with aspects to it that can make it far more complicated. So it will... a would appeal to those who are hard, hardened gamers like myself. Uh, another mechanism that I liked about this game was the fact that, unlike Ticket to Ride, you do not refill 
the 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 cards that when they are taken so if you're playing like a a three or four player game when you if you're going later on in the turn your what you can do is going to be severely curtailed so having that first player option or play, going early on in the turn is absolutely vital so you have to make good use of the times when you have that first player marker in front of you i also like the ampm uh, actions that you get two actions per turn and the game flows really well uh, it doesn't outstay its welcome when we played it i thought i was going to lose and but i ended up coming out on top and that's always a kind of a nice feeling so this is a game that uh, should be published soon it's it's being uh, the art is going to be finalized and and paul says that you know hopefully you'll be going off to be printed and published uh, it's definitely one that i would like to play again and uh, once we have played this again enough times to give you a better review of it uh, we will do so so that's it this is hubert hung signing off for club it tv Thank you.